Okay, so here's your lesson on solving linear systems with three variables. We've done two variables before, um, you know, x's and y's, and we solve them by substitution and elimination. Now we're doing the same thing with three variables. We're going to throw in a z-coordinate in there to completely confuse you and uh, maybe blow your mind a little bit. Um, so objective one is to geometrically interpret the solution to a linear system in three variables. We did this with two variables when it was x and y. We were expecting to have two lines that intersect at one point, or maybe the two lines were the same line, so they intersected everywhere, or maybe they didn't intersect at all because they were parallel. So we're going to do the same kind of thing with the three variable system. And then objective two, to actually solve these linear systems with three variables by either elimination or substitution. Okay, so if you look over there at the assignment, you might notice that there says uh, extra credit. So it's actually a, a bonus opportunity for the quiz. You can earn yourself an extra 10 points by doing something. Uh, I'll talk about it when the time is right. Okay, so objective one, being able to geometrically interpret the solution to a linear system with three variables in it. Okay, so what we have here is a, a 3D scan made by uh, Xbox Connect Scanner. So, um, you know, most of the things that we do in math classes are two-dimensional on an XY coordinate plane. We're writing on a paper or whatever. But, you know, in real life, things are three-dimensional. So this, the Connect sensor, uh, of course, from Xbox, can scan things in 3D, and that's one of the pictures. And, and we're talking about solving a system that takes place in three dimensions instead of just two. So a linear equation that has three variables, x, y, and z, looks like this. This is how you write it. ax plus by plus cz is equal to d, where a, b, c, and d, those are just any old numbers as long as not all of them are zero. Some of them can be zero, but just not all of them. Okay. And uh, since, um, well, look at this. So if we have x and y, x and y, well, those are that's a two-dimensional graph, right? This is 2D. Two dimensions, and those two dimensions are length and width. So length and width. And then if we have x, y, and z, x, y, and z, then we're talking about 3D stuff, three dimensions, and those three spatial dimensions are length, width, and height. Of course, you knew that from geometry. Okay. So we're going to do a little graphing activity to graph things in, in three dimensions. Talk about what a point looks like there, and then also what one of these linear equations in three, in three variables are supposed to look like. So before we start it, you, of course, need yourself a piece of 3D graphing paper. So if you look right above my head, there's a link for you to click on open up the PDF, print yourself out some of these 3D grids so you can uh, do this. So go ahead and pause it and print that stuff out if you haven't already. All right, you're back? Okay. So um, uh, in three dimensions on XY coordinate, XYZ coordinate grid, um, the axes break the thing up, the space up into eight octants. Whenever it was just xy coordinate plane, let me just kind of draw something right here. We have the uh, y axis and we had the x axis. That broke that up into four quadrants, right? One, two, three, and four. You remember those. But now we throw in a z axis and we're breaking it up into eight octants. Okay? So think of, let me change colors here. Think of our um, space here that we're talking about in three dimensions, it's the same thing that it used to be. X, Y coordinate plane is still there, but now we just add a Z axis that's coming out at us. And let me um, kind of make it go back into space too, like with a dash there. Okay. It's just that we take that thing and we usually just kind of turn it so the X, Y coordinate plane the one that we're used to is laying down flat. So let me just kind of color that in. This is the plane that we're so used to graphing on, right? And now we're just talking about coming out, out of it. So on this grid, it is conventional to say that on the y-axis, you see that's the horizontal one, 
I know it's weird because you're used to that being the y of uh, the x-axis, whatever. We're going to say that this side is positive and this side here is negative, okay? And coming out towards us, we're going to say that that part of the x-axis is positive and going backwards, that part of the x-axis is negative, okay? You probably should label this stuff on one of your little grids. And then finally, coming upwards on the z-axis, that part is positive, and going downwards, that part is negative on the z-axis, okay? And then, of course, when we, we find points in space, they're located with an ordered triple. Instead of an ordered pair, an ordered triple, x, y, z, all right? All right, so far. Now, um, oh, so here's a little picture I, I found on the internet that kind of shows a 3D grid, and this 3D grid is made out of uh, little LEDs. So each one of those LED lights would just indicate a point in space so that you could light up, say, the point 3, 4, 2, something like that, um, where you would just have an x-axis and a y-axis and then coming out at you or coming up off of the floor being a z-axis. All right, before we go much further, let's look at this in, in Sketchpad so I can move something around so you can get a better grasp of what's going on in three dimensions, okay? Okay, so in this sketch, I made a, a three-dimensional three grid with a y-axis horizontally, a x-axis coming out at us, and then the z-axis going up and down. And I can kind of move this point around so you can get a, a you know, just get an idea what this thing looks like as we, we move the thing around, okay? So instead of having little squares to mark your grid marks like you would have on a piece of graph paper, here you'd actually have little cubes, right? Okay, so let me just put this someplace where it doesn't mess with your eyes too badly, and let's plot the point 1, 2, 1. And there it is in space, okay? And, and it's kind of hard to make out here where the thing actually is supposed to be because we're taking a three-dimensional thing and squishing it down to two dimensions. So let me actually put in a prism because whenever you plot one of these points, basically that's what you're tracing out. So the x-coordinate is 1, so it's like we have a width of 1. Our y-coordinate is 2, so we have a length of 2. And then finally our height is 1, so we have... Uh, our z-coordinate of being 1. And so that's what a point in space would look like. All right, that was interesting. Okay, so the solution to a linear equation in three variables is going to be the set of all points, x, y, and z, that satisfy the equation. When it was two variables, the word linear meant that it would make a line. The same thing is not going to be true in three dimensions, okay? So we're going to look at what that shape is going to be for a linear equation in three variables, okay? So we're going to start by finding the x, the y, and the z um, intercepts, right? That's, that's one way that we used to graph a line. We find the x-intercept, find the y-intercept, we can connect it. But now we have three intercepts, x, y, and z. Let's find those and connect them and see what's going on. So to find the x-intercept here, I would just plug in 0 for y, plug in 0 for y, a 0 for z, divide by 3, and I would get x is equal to 4. So this would correspond to the point 4, 0, 0. All right, and I think I have a picture coming up there. There we go. So to plot the point 4, 0, 0, it's on the x-axis coming out towards us as positive, so I just count up four spaces, one, two, three, four, put a dot. Okay, so far. Now I just got to do this two more times for the y-intercept and the z-intercept, okay? So let's next find the y-intercept by substituting in zero for x and z. So uh, let's see, there we go. Remember the equation was, I don't even remember the equation. Let me go back here and see this. Let's, let's just do it right here, and then I can plot the points in a second. So we've got, um, to find the y-intercept, we're going to make a 0 for x and a 0 for y. I'd be dividing by 4, so that means that y is equal to 3, and that would correspond to the point 0, 3, 0. 
And then finally, if I'm finding the z-intercept, I would make x equals 0, y equals 0. I'd be dividing by 6, and z is equal to 2. So z equals 2, and that corresponds to the point 0, 0, 2. OK, so we're going to plot those each. So there is uh, 0, 3, 0 to the right is positive for the y-axis. So it counts three spaces, 1, 2, 3. OK, and the other one was uh, 0, 0, 2 for the z-axis. So positive is going up, so two spaces up. And I just connect those three points. OK, so the question is, what is the shape then of a, the graph a linear equation in three variables. So when we connect it, you might be going, yeah, pretty sure that's a triangle, right? I think that's a triangle, huh? Well, except for it's not. It's not. So I, I want to uh, like refresh your memory of something from geometry, a postulate from geometry. It, it goes a little something like this. Through any three non-collinear points, thunder, it's a dramatic. I'll wait for it. Okay, through any three non-collinear points, there exists exactly one plane. Huh? Right? So this means then that if I had those three points, the ones that I, I just connected to make that triangular shape, those three points actually make a plane. Okay? It's just that it would be pretty difficult for me to actually physically draw this plane in there, but it's easy for me to draw the triangle. I would just realize that this is just a small portion, it's just a cut off section of a plane that would go on forever, right? And then also think about this, right? When it's in two dimensions, whenever you um, go to graph a, a two dimensional like XY line, XY, you're actually graphing a 1D line. So Y equals MX plus B is a one dimensional line, right? So in x, y, z, you're going to graph it in a 3D space, but where you're graphing is a 2D plane, right? You're just going up a dimension each time. Okay, so uh, here's the thing. In order to actually see it better, um, why don't we look at this in Microsoft Mathematics 4. This is a free download if you have a PC. If you have a Macintosh, you have a secret graphing program that graphs in 3Ds and, and actually um, allows you to record some movements around it too. That's pretty sweet. But uh, this is a free download. You can get it off my website through the uh, web portal. And um, I'm going to tell you about an extra credit opportunity that will correspond to this graphing program. But now let's just take a look at that same equation graphed on here so we can move the thing around we can see it as a plane. It's actually that plane that's right there, but let's see it and type it in and move it and see how to actually make it work. All right, so this is what Microsoft Mathematics 5 looks like, when, 4, looks like whenever you uh, first open the program. So you have kind of a calculator keypad over here. If you're going to type stuff in, you could type it down here in the worksheet and hit enter and stuff. But what we want to do is up at the top, you want to go to the graphing tab. So I'm going to click that graphing tab there. And uh, underneath the graphing tab, it says equations and functions. And there's a pull down menu right now. It says 2D. But of course, we're going to graph something in 3D. So click that and then choose 3D from that menu. OK. And now I'm just going to type in that first equation. I believe that it was 3x. Just type it on your, on your keyboard. Plus 4y plus 6z is equal to 12. OK, so once I get it in, I hit Enter. And nothing happens. Because I need to go down here, and I need to choose the little graph button. I need to click that button. When I do, it, there it is. It's right here, and I can kind of spin this thing around. And I could take a look at what that plane would look like. And I kind of spin it around and stuff. And there's other options that you can choose. Like uh, you can choose a plotting range. So it's like your viewing rectangle. Um, you can make a proportional display if you wanted to. So it's, it's like choosing the same numbers on the x, y, and the z coordinates. And uh, you can make this like a wireframe instead of a full color surface if you wanted to, too. 
Okay. Okay. So, for exercise one, let's go ahead and have you graph this next one. Are you going to graph this one, or are we going to graph this one together? Let me see. You're going to graph this one by yourself. So, graph this equation, sketch the graph of it. It's just going to be the triangular part. I'm not expecting you to graph the whole entire plane, right? Of 3x plus 9y minus 3z equals negative 18. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video, graph that sucker, and then let's see how you did. All right, uh, so here we go. You should have gotten an x-intercept of negative 6, a y-intercept of negative 2, a z-intercept of positive 6. You connect those three, three dots to make a triangular shape, but that triangular shape is just a section of the, that 2D plane which is the actual graph of that, of that equation. And uh, so here is, um, like on Microsoft Mathematics, that's, that's the picture that it gave me for that, for that equation. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to put together, like, what should it look like if I put all, all three of these kinds of equations together? How are they going to intersect? What should I interpret the solution to look like? Okay.